Let's now examine the Vaqua Triangle. The Vaqua Triangle is a classic model for visualizing and classifying various machine translation methodologies. Bernard Vaqua was a French machine translation researcher in the mid 20th century. In 1976, Bernard Vaqua published a journal article in Statistical Methods in Linguistics. This was a survey article titled Automatic Translation, a survey of different approaches. In this article, Va Qua examines, surveys, and attempts to classify various machine translation methodologies that were in use at the time of the article. In this presentation, we are going to go through and look at the various levels in the Vaqua Triangle. Some depictions of the triangle show it reversed from what you see here. I will be following Vaqua's original diagram. I find that having the most deep levels of analysis at the bottom make more sense to me than having them at the top. So I'll be following that model. Let's dig in. In translation, we begin with a sentence, an utterance, or a document in its original source language. The goal of translation is to transfer or translate that document, utterance, or sentence into its equivalent in a desired target language. At the surface level of the source language sentence, we have words. We would ultimately like to have an equivalent representation in the target language. That is, we begin with a representation of a source language sentence in its surface form, that is, the form that you hear when spoken, or the form that you read when in orthographic written form. We want, ultimately, a translation in the target language that is also in the target language surface form. We could now think of the underlying levels of linguistic analysis that one could perform on that surface level. Beneath the surface level, one could imagine a level of syntax, representing the structure of the original source language sentence, or, on the target side, the structure of the target language sentence. Below syntax is semantics, representing the meaning of the utterance or the sentence. You could examine the semantics of the original source language sentence, and you could consider the semantics of the target language translation. It has been hypothesized by various thinkers beginning at least as far back as 17th century Europe, that one could, in principle, develop a truly language-independent, deep semantic representation that is interlingual in nature. That is, it is the same for all languages. We know of no such representation. No one has ever successfully developed one but you could still imagine and think of such a representation. If we go back to Bernard Vaqua's actual diagram, you see that at the bottom of his triangle, this is labeled the ideal level of understanding. Notice that in his triangle, Bernard Vaqua 
has dashed lines at this ideal level of understanding, indicating that he recognized that this was an ideal, but no one actually achieves it. So, this is our model. We have a source language sentence. We want a target language sentence. We could engage and look at translation at the level of the surface form, that is, the words. Or we could go deeper, looking at syntax or semantics, or hypothetically, an idealized interlingual semantic representation. Let's look at the various machine translation paradigms that were in use in the mid 20th century. These are all rule-based systems that use these various levels of analysis. The first that we will consider is direct transfer. In direct transfer, we begin with a source language representation, that is, the surface form of the source sentence. In direct transfer, there's a transfer process, a direct, perhaps word-for-word, -word dictionary lookup, where each word in the source language sentence is transferred, translated, into its equivalent target language representation. Perhaps some minor reordering is done, but essentially this is a word-for-word -word direct translation method. There's really no level of analysis, no deep analysis. We're simply directly translating each word in the source language sentence into its target language equivalent. The very earliest machine translation systems dating back to the late 1940s were direct transfer systems. But what if we want to go deeper? What if we want to make use of one of these deeper levels of analysis? Well, we would then start with the source language surface form and perform some level of analysis. If we want to deal with syntax, then this analysis would begin with the surface form of the source language sentence and analyze it into some syntactic representation. This would likely be some sort of tree, a syntactic constituency or dependency tree or some other form of syntactic representation. So we begin with the source language sentence and we perform syntactic analysis to come up with a source language specific syntactic analysis, a representation of the source language syntax. Then we perform syntactic transfer. So starting with a syntactic representation of the source language utterance, that is a syntax tree of the source language, syntactic transfer uses rules written at the level of the syntax that transform a source language sentence into its equivalent in the target language syntax. So syntactic transfer transforms a source syntax tree into a target syntax tree. Now this may involve reordering, this may involve other syntactic level transformations because languages vary in how their syntax represents various phenomenon. Once we have a target language syntax tree, then we're going to perform the inverse operation to analysis, that is, generation. 
So starting from a target language syntactic representation, generation is the process of going from the syntactic representation back to the desired surface form. That is, generating the desired target language surface form. These are the three steps in transfer. Specifically, what we see here is syntactic transfer. We begin with a source language surface form. We perform analysis, specifically syntactic analysis, to transform the surface form into an underlying syntactic representation that is specific to the source language. Then we perform transfer, specifically syntactic transfer, to transfer the syntactic representation of the source language sentence to an equivalent syntactic representation in the target language's syntactic formalism. These formalisms need not be the same. So you could, for example, on the source language side, use a syntactic constituency tree, and on the target side, use a syntactic dependency tree. Throughout the latter half of the 20th century, syntactic transfer became the dominant and most successful machine translation paradigm until it was later supplanted by statistical methods in the late 20th and early 21st centuries. Let's now look at a deeper level of analysis. So we're moving from syntactic transfer to semantic transfer. Semantic transfer was less popular and less frequently used, but it did exist. So in syntactic transfer, we began with syntactic analysis. We started with a source language in its surface form and analyzed it into a syntactic representation. In semantic transfer, instead, we're going to go deeper. We're still gonna start with the source language surface form, but we're gonna go into a deeper analysis. So we're gonna come up with some sort of logical form, perhaps, or other semantic representation. So source, we're going to start with the source sentence, the source utterance, and perform semantic analysis to obtain a semantic representation that is appropriate for the source language. Once we have a semantic representation of the source language sentence, we're going to perform transfer. This time, we'll be performing semantic transfer. Semantic transfer takes the semantic representation of the source language sentence in a formalism that is specific to the source language and transforms it into an equivalent semantic representation that's appropriate for the target language. This may or may not be the same formalism. Once we have a semantic representation of the target language sentence, then generation is used. Here, generation will begin with the semantic representation of the target language sentence and generate the actual surface form. So this will get us from the underlying semantic representation to the actual surface form of the target language sentence once it's translated. So this process overall, like syntactic transfer, has three components, analysis, transfer, and generation. So semantic transfer begins with the source language in its surface form, that is the actual sentence. 
semantic analysis is performed to transform the source language sentence from its surface form into an underlying semantic representation that is specific to the source language. Transfer then is performed where we begin with the semantic representation in a form that's specific to the source language and semantic transfer then transforms that source language semantic representation into an appropriate and equivalent semantic representation in the target language. Generation then transforms the semantic representation of the target language sentence into the actual surface form in the target language. Let's finally take a look at going even deeper. This is going to involve interlingua. As I mentioned before, no one has ever really succeeded in developing a truly language independent semantic representation that is interlingual in nature. That is, it can be used just as well to represent the deep meaning of any language. Many have tried though, and there have been machine translation systems, particularly in the late 20th century, that claimed to be interlingual systems. Usually these were specific to a particular domain and usually specific to a small set of often related languages. So we're gonna perform analysis, but instead of performing syntactic analysis, we're gonna go deeper than that. So deeper than syntactic analysis is semantic analysis. And hypothetically, if we could go to the deepest level, we would do an interlingual analysis. So we would begin with the source language sentence in its surface form, and we would analyze it into an ideal representation. So this doesn't really exist, but if, it, if we could, if we could succeed in this, the idea is that the red triangle you see at the lowest level of the bigger triangle is a truly language independent semantic representation of the source language sentence. Now, if we had such a representation, there would then be no need to conduct transfer because by definition, the representation that we have is already fully language independent. And because this representation is truly language independent, then we should be able to directly generate the target language sentence from this underlying language independent interlingual representation. So interlingua, when applied to machine translation, consists of only two steps, not three. There is no transfer in interlingua. Instead, interlingual representations uh, are used at the, at the base. They're the result of analysis. So in interlingua, you begin with the surface form of the source language sentence, perform the deepest possible level of analysis, resulting in, ideally, a truly language independent interlingual representation. And then from that same representation, the surface form of the target language sentence is directly generated. So let's summarize. In direct transfer, we begin with a sentence in a source language representation, specifically the surface form, the sentence as you would see it on the page. In direct transfer, each word in the source language sentence is directly transferred through some sort of word-for-word -word lookup and transfer into its equivalent in the target language sentence. So we begin with a surface form in the source language and we end with a surface form in the target language through a single process of 
word for word or direct transfer. In syntactic transfer, we begin with the source language sentence in the surface form, and we end with the target language sentence in its surface form, but the process of getting there is more complex. We begin by analyzing the surface form of the source language sentence into a syntactic representation that's appropriate for the source language. So some sort of syntax tree, typically. This source language syntactic representation is then transferred using syntactic transfer into an equivalent target language syntactic representation. From the target language syntactic representation, we generate. So generation takes us from a syntactic representation in the source language to an equivalent surface level representation that's appropriate for the target language. So thus, we go from the surface form in the source language to source language syntactic representation to target language syntactic representation to target language surface form. Syntactic transfer was the dominant paradigm for machine translation from the mid 20th through the late 20th century. Semantic transfer was less uh, prevalent, but still occurred. In semantic representation, semantic transfer, we go through the same three steps, analysis, transfer, and generation. But this time, instead of the deep representation being a syntactic representation, it's going to be a semantic representation. So in semantic transfer, we go from a surface form in the source language. We analyze this surface form into a semantic representation, for example, a logical form, and then transfer that representation from one that's appropriate for the source language, the one that we got from analysis, into an equivalent but potentially different paradigm semantic representation for the target language sentence. Then the semantic representation of the target language sentence is used to generate the resulting surface form in the target language. Finally, we have the idea of an interlingua. This has never been successfully employed. Various approaches attempted interlingua with moderate degrees of success, but none really came up with a truly language independent semantic representation. The idea, though, was to go from a surface form of the source language sentence and do deep analysis, the deepest possible, resulting in a truly language independent semantic representation that is interlingual in nature, that is, can be used for any language. In this paradigm, no transfer is necessary because the result of analysis is already language independent. Therefore, after analysis, generation applies directly from this interlingual representation. And from the interlingual representation, generation produces a target language surface form directly. There are the levels of the Vakwa triangle. The surface form, where we have representation of words, a deeper level where we have a representation of syntax, an even deeper level where we have a representation of semantics, and a hypothetical deepest level with an interlingual representation.